Greetings and blessings to you all. We are excited to be back with another episode of Change of Raymond. Before we get into our topic today, I would like to introduce and announce again the CIS podcast. We already shot our last episode that aired um, last week. And so we have other topics that we want to bring to you all. If you have not checked out the first one, we encourage you to go to this playlist, Change of Raiment, and look up that uh, podcast. It's called the Sisters in Scripture podcast. We are excited for the topics we have coming. But today we are going to be dealing with Change of Raiment. So before we begin, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, we are so thankful that you've allowed us to share on this platform principles of truth as it relates to change of raiment in a literal sense and also a change of character, a change of that spiritual raiment so that we can be clothed with your righteousness. Please give us wisdom, give us knowledge, give us understanding. Help us to examine ourselves as we hear these principles and make the necessary changes with your help and by your grace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So we have been looking at change of raiment for, from very many different perspectives. We have been looking at it from two main perspectives, really, uh, from a modesty perspective and also from a health perspective. But today, we're going to be considering this topic of change of raiment from the perspective of stewardship. Now, we all understand and we know unequivocally that we are living in the last days of this earth's history, the final moments of the investigative judgment. And God is asking us, what are we doing with the time that he's given us? What are we doing with the means that he's given us? How are we treating the health that he has given us? So we are going to be looking at dress reform, change of raiment from this perspective of stewardship. So before we go any further, some of our younger listeners may not know what stewardship means. So we're going to go to the screen and we are going to define what stewardship is. So stewardship is the conducting, supervising, or managing of something, especially the careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care. Now let me ask you all this question. Is anything that we have our own Well, the Bible tells us and makes it very clear in Psalm 24, verse 1, that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So everything in this earth belongs to God. Everything that we have possession of is God's. And not only the material things, but even the intangible things, such as our health, such as our minds, such as our time, all of these things belong to God. And as I mentioned before, as we're living in the investigative judgment, God is going to take a very strict account of how we use or misuse our time, our means, our health, our minds. What are we doing? So we're going to be relating these principles to dress. Okay, so we're going to be looking at it from these three perspectives, and we're going to start out with means. So what does the Bible say about our means And also, before we get into that, before we get into that, I want us to set the stage by reading this statement, this potent statement from Testimonies for the Church. And this lesson is one in which God is asking us all, myself included, to self-reflect, examine ourselves, see where we stand with God as it relates to these principles. And we're going to see that all of these principles shown in the spirit of prophecy are directed to us Sabbath keepers are directed to us who God has given the light on dress reform, not only to live by the principles of dress reform, but also to share them. So examine yourself and ask God to show us our shortcomings. All right. So it says that we can be a disgrace to the cause of God. But why? Because we sacrifice our time, our health and our means on the shrine, the altar of fashion. It says, I was shown the conformity of some professed Sabbath keepers to the world. Oh, I saw that it is a disgrace to their profession, a disgrace to the cause of God. They give the lie to their profession. They think that they are not like the world, but they are so near like them in what? Dress, in conversation and action that there is no distinction. I saw them decorating their poor mortal bodies, which are liable at any moment to be touched by the finger of God and laid upon a bed of anguish. 
Oh, then, as they approach their last change, mortal anguish racks their frames, and the great inquiry is, am I prepared to die? Prepared to appear before God in judgment and pass the grand review? Examine yourself on this part now. Ask them then, ask yourself, how would you feel about decorating your bodies? And if they have any sense of what it is to be prepared to appear before God, they will tell you that if they could take back and live over the past, they would correct their lives, shun the follies of the world, its vanity and pride, and would adorn the body with modest apparel and set an example to all around them. They would live to the glory of God. Praise God that none of us watching right now are in this condition, that we have the opportunity now to right the wrongs, now to dress according to God's order, now to adorn ourselves with the character that God is asking us to adorn ourselves with. Okay, so that's going to set the stage. So we're going to look at money, first of all. All right, money. How are we using the money that God has given? Because we understand as well in 1 Chronicles 29, verse 14, it says, all things come of thee. So whatever means God places in our hands, we are to be stewards of the, those means. We are to use them to his glory, not for vanity, not for pride, not for show. All right. So we're going to I hope you all have your papers, your pens, your Bibles. We're not going to be able to read all of the statements. This is for your reference. Praise God. We're on video so you can pause it if because I'm do, going to be doing a lot of referencing. We'll read the high points and touch on the high points. But really, this is for you to go back and study. And as I said before, examine yourself as you do so. OK. So what does the Bible say about this costly array? The, there's a prohibition for us to be uh, buying or using our money for costly array. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair, we dealt with that, or gold or pearls, dealt with both of those, or costly array. So the money that we spend should not be spent in this costly array, Okay. What is costly array? The costly array tends to be the clothing that God's word condemns, the extravagant clothing, the superfluous clothing, right? The clothing that does not meet the standard of dress reform, the clothing, the clothing that is designed to draw attention to oneself with the sequins and all of the added things, the bling bling, as <laughs> people often call it, right? The things that would draw attention, the ornamentation, costly array. All right, let's see what the Bible says in James. Let's look at this other scripture. It says, for if there come into your assembly, it's talking about the congregation, a man with a gold ring. Does the Bible prohibit the wearing of gold and jewelry? Yes, it does. In goodly apparel. Now this, the context of this is going to tell us that this goodly apparel falls under the category of the costly array. He's wearing a gold ring. So this goodly apparel is deemed goodly apparel by people in the world, but it is not according to God. And there come also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Stool, are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? I'm not dealing with the totality of the scripture. I want to hone in on goodly apparel and gay clothing. Now, of course, the gay clothing here referred to is not um, gay clothing as we use the term gay today. In the Bible times, th that was not what it was talking about. Although today there are people that wear clothing, men that wear clothing that are effeminate and women wear the clothing that pertain unto a man. So we could make the application, but it's talking about the clothing that is exorbitant, that is extravagant. OK, that's what it's referring to there. And I want to look at that word goodly because we find that in the in the context of raiment, another place in scripture, if we consider Joshua, the account of Joshua and when they had overthrown Jericho, God told his people not to take of any of the spoils. Right. They were not to take of the accursed thing. But yet there was a man named Achan and he took a Babylonish garment. What did he call it? He called it a goodly Babylonish garment. 
Is anything from Babylon good? <laughs> no, it was a worldly garment, a garment according to the fashions of Babylon. Okay, so that's the goodly um, apparel that is here being referred to, apparel that is deemed good by the world, but God calls it an accursed thing. You can find that in Joshua chapter 6. You can look at verses 10, 11, 12, verse 15. Just read the whole account of Joshua 6. And we know what the fate of not only Achan was, but his family and also the lives that were lost due to Achan's sin of holding on to this Babylonish garment that he called goodly. Okay, so again, examine yourself. Are you spending God's money to lavish all of these expensive and extravagant clothing and ornaments upon yourself while the money should be used for the advancement of God's cause or even used for your own necessities or to help somebody else that may be less fortunate. Okay, let's continue. All right, I want you to take this reference down here. Devotion to dress takes from the means entrusted for works of mercy and benevolence. So while we're spending money on clothes for vanity, I'm not talking about, we need clothes, right? So of course, I'm not talking about, um, buying the clothes that would meet God's standard of dress reform. We're talking about using God's mean to decorate your body, to draw glory and attention to yourself. That's what we're talking about. So we're, we're not being extreme here. Okay. We all need clothes. We know that. That's why we have this series change of raiment. All right. But this is talking about to follow the fashions. You're spending um, a lot of money on clothing just to appear like the world. Okay. And while you're doing that, you're taking away from those that could be benefited from uh, by acts of mercy and benevolence. As it says here, it says our means have not been given to us for the gratification of pride. That's what we're talking about. The love of display. What is your motive in purchasing certain items of clothing, certain accessories even? What is your motive? Is it pride? Is it to gather attention to yourself? Or is it to be in harmony with God's word? Okay, another qualification that needs to be made here is that we understand that sometimes we learned in this series that the synthetic materials aren't the best uh, materials to be uh, for our clothing, right? So it's better to have the natural materials like your cottons, your silk, your linen, etc. Those may be a little more. Okay, we're not talking about that. All right, again, we're talking about spending God's money for the gratification of pride and for self to, to draw attention to yourself. All right. So let's go to the screen here. When we do this, we give an incorrect representation of God, right? And of his truth and of our profession. Christians are not to decorate the person with costly array or expensive ornaments. Then let's look at the yellow expensive dress and adornment of jewelry give an incorrect representation of the truth that should always be represented as the highest value as of the highest value An overdressed outwardly adorned person bears the sign of inward poverty. A lack of spirituality is revealed. We won't take time to elaborate on each quotation as they are very self-explanatory. Again, ask yourself the question, what is my motive? in buying this garment, this uh, piece of clothing? Is it to draw attention to myself or is it to give glory to God? Am I living above my means, spending money that I really don't have on clothing when I already have enough suitable clothing, right? Okay, so we should practice economy. That's what the next um, statements here say from child, well, the first one from the great controversy and also from child guidance. I believe the first one is supposed to be child guidance as well. Worldlings spend much on dress. Are we a worldling or are we the remnant of God? It depends. Or how are you behaving? How are you spending the means God gave you? Gay or expensive apparel is not becoming to those who profess to believe that we are living in the last days. Do we believe that the investigative judgment is soon to close? Do we believe that we're in the final moments of Earth's history? Do we believe that at any moment even our lives could be taken? We could die. Do we really believe it? Are our actions showing do we, that we believe it? 
All right, the next statement there was from Child Guidance 421 that we have to practice economy. We're going to move on. So these are some points of self-reflection. Just think back to all of the different lessons on dress reform. We've dealt with hair. We've dealt with um, covering the extremity. We've dealt with a lot of topics as it relates to dress reform. Now ask yourself this question. Hair, how much money to put in weave, extensions, braids? Sometime it can take a whole day, 6 to 12 hours. How much money is spent? Sorry, we're not to time yet. I'm jumping ahead of myself. How much money? Sometime, I mean, the hair industry is a, a multi-billion dollar industry. Also the fashion industry. How much money is spent on professional hairstyling? Right? Tally it up in your mind. How much money do you spend on these things? Where could that money go that it would be of better use? You have to give an account of that. How much money is spent on makeup and nails, which are prohibited in the Bible? We dealt with cosmetics. So we're spending money for things that God said we shouldn't even be doing. How much money is spent on jewelry? Right? Should we be wearing jewelry? No, we found out from our previous lesson that the Bible condemns the wearing of jewelry. We're not to put that on. How much money do we spend on shoes? We don't need to pay $1,000 for a pair of shoes. We don't need to pay $300, $500 for a pair of shoes. Even if you have money like that, is that being a good steward of God's money? Examine yourself. Where is the money going? And then at the end of the month, you real, or the beginning of the month, you realize, wow, I don't have much money for bills. Well, look to where you're putting the money. Where, where have you been spending your money? Is it for the gratification of self and pride? Okay, and the last bullet point on there, how much money is spent in shopping for the latest fashions? A lot of people, they're really into these name brands, whether it's shoes, whether it's bags, whether it's um, clothing. They have to get the latest, what, Louis Vuitton or I don't even know them, Chanel bags and et cetera. And they're spending a lot more money than they should when they could get a simple bag that would work just as well. And sometimes those expensive things may wear out than something that was less costly. Okay, so... Money, this quotation from Christ Objects Less Lesson says that money not to be used for self-glorification. You can read that. The reference is there. Okay. And also, it continues. Pause the screen. Read it. Note it. And God's encouragement. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread and labor for that which satisfieth not? So a lot of times the money that we're spending, as I said before, I'm just reiterating we're spending on things that God said we shouldn't even do. Okay? So, yes, of course, we want to buy durable clothing that's going to last and it's going to represent Christ. We're not saying you buy the cheapest clothing that's going to wear out in the next week because that's a waste of money too because guess what? You're going to have to constantly replace. So, of course, you're going to buy clothing that's durable, clothing that looks nice, clothing that is, like we said, of the healthiest um, material, the natural fibers. So, yes, you may pay a little more for that, but it's going to last you. All right. So we're, we want to be balanced here. But you have to examine yourself and ask, am I using money that I really don't have or money that should be put to a better cause um, on the gratification of pride just so that I can appear like the world, just for the sake of fashion, just so I can turn heads when I walk in a room. All right. So we're going to go to time. OK. And speaking of time, my time is almost up already. So I'm going to have to hasten uh, quickly. So hopefully you all will keep up. All right. This says that time is a talent and of no other um, of no other talent that God has given us. Will he require a more strict account than that of our time? And then the next part says that the value of time is beyond computation. Time is something that we will never get back. Once we spend time, you cannot recall that time. You'll never get it back. How much time do you feel? spin on decorating yourself, on doing your hair, uh, again, self-examination, on looking for clothes, on shopping. How many hours? Do an do a introspect. Look, look at your week, day by day, Sunday. What did I spend my time on? And not just as it relates to rest, but just what am I giving my time and attention to that should be given to my spiritual life, to my character development, to reading the Bible, to prayer, to study, to witnessing? And a lot of times we're going to find that we're spending more time on ourselves and decorating ourselves for fashion's sake again, sacrificing our time, not only our means, but our time on the altar of fashion, on the shrine of fashion. We're going to have to give an account for that every moment. 
we'll have to give an account for. All right, next statement here says that there are hours. I saw that some professed Sabbath keepers spend hours that are worse than thrown away in studying this or that fashion to decorate the poor mortal bodies. Body. So they're looking at magazines, they're looking on the internet, they're looking at YouTube. Oh, what's the latest trend? What's the latest fashion? Oh, let me get this dress, let me get that. And then it says, while you make yourselves appear like the world and as beautiful as you can, remember that the same body may in a few days be food for worms. Again, we don't know how much time God has given us, but we have to make the best use of the time he's given us. Don't use your time to study this in that fashion. As a matter of fact, the, the mere wearing of clothes should be a reminder of our sins anyway. We put so much um, pride and people make idols, idolatry out of idols, out of clothing. When our clothing should be a reminder that we lost that glorious character, that covering that God had, that covering of light. But yet we want to idolize fashion and clothes because self is not dead. Vanity and pride. Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. All is vanity. Last statement from Signs of the Times. It repeats it again. Our bodies could soon be food for worms, but yet we want to decorate it to appear like the world. Okay, again, this is talking about being slaves to fashion and what we're doing with our time. But what account can those who follow the fashions and follies of the present day render to God for the use they have made of the time and abilities given them for wise improvement? Next yellow part. Many women who profess to be followers of Jesus Christ are servants, slaves, to the fashions of the world and delight to adopt new inventions. How are we spending our time? Okay, no time to pray or study. So when we devote all of this time to shopping and to fashion and to hair and to this and to that and to all of these things, where's our time to pray? Where's our time to study? Where is our time to evangelize? Look at the yellow part. This is talking about Satan, Satan. Satan knows that women who constantly have a feverish desire to follow the fashions have benumbed their moral sensibilities and do not realize their real spiritual condition. Worldly minded, they are without God, without hope. They take no time to pray or to search the scriptures in order that they may understand the truth and teach it to their children. So even they're neglecting their children. And it says Satan's object, I'm back up to the top, Satan's object is gained if he can invent something that will so attract the mind that God will be forgotten. And what is it? Worldly fashion. How are we using our time? Self-examination, brothers and sisters. That's what the next slide is about. How many hours, okay, do you spend on your hair? Installing weaves, braids. I, I, this is what I had alluded to earlier. I jumped the gun here. But how many hours? It can take up to 12 hours, six hours, eight hours, time that could have been spent doing something profitable, time that could have been devoted to your children, time that could have been devoted to evangelism, time to, to devote it to um, learning a skill. How many hours to take them out, right? How many hours are spent in the salon? How many hours to put on makeup, nails, waxing, etc.? How many hours to take all of that stuff off? How many hours are spent in shopping? Compare that. Sister White was shown a vision with scales. You know, the, the balances where you put something in and then you have something in the other side. And she said there was a scale. And on one side, there were thoughts of the world, everything that pertains to the world on one side. And on the other hand were spiritual things. And oh, how quickly the side went down with all of the cares of the world, including fashion and dress. How do we spend our time? If we were to compare our time in spiritual things, do we spend more time in prayer, searching of the scripture, evangelism, teaching our children, etc., Or do we spend more time on the gratification of self, the beautification, so-called beautification of ourselves? Satan well knows that all whom he can lead to neglect prayer and the searching of the scriptures will be overcome by his attacks. Therefore, that's why he invents every possible device to engross the mind. And that's what he's done with this worldly fashion. May God save us from the slavery of fashion. All right, so we're going to move on to health. Now, since we've dealt with health in the majority of our uh, lessons, we've dealt with dress reform from a modesty perspective. 
we've also been looking at most of our topics. We've also been looking at it from a health perspective. So we're not going to spend as much time on this segment here. OK, we're just going to touch some points, touch and go, as it were. So health. All right. So we are not our own. These are the scriptures. The Bible says that all throughout. We are but stewards. And we again, as we have to give an account for our money, as we have the way we spend it, God's money, rather, we have to give an account of how we spend the time God has lent us. We have to give an account for our health. A lot of the fashions of the world are leading people to destroy their health. The cosmetics, the tattooing, the hairstyles, the dyes, the perms, the chemicals, the tight clothing, the extremities being exposed, the nakedness being exposed. All of these things contribute to disease. And we're going to see this in the following quotation. We must co-op, well, actually, we must cooperate with God in taking care of our bodies. That's what this says. The yellow part says all are under obligation to him to keep the human structure in a healthful, wholesome condition that every muscle, every organ may be used in the service of God. We have to give an account. So here it is. Dress deform is health deform. Dress reform is health reform. So if we neglect dress reform, we're neglecting health reform. They go hand in hand. Look what she says here. Disease of every type is brought upon the body through the unhealthful, fashionable style of dress. And the fact should be made prominent that a reform must take place. And that's why we're doing this series, because God's people have been given these beautiful truths on dress reform, but yet we are neglecting them. Why? Or fashion because we are slaves of the world, slaves of fashion. The Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. All that is in the world, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. James 4, 4, that was 1 John 2, verse 15. James 4, 4 says, ye adulterer and adulteresses, um, that friendship with the world is enmity with Christ. Are we becoming enemies of Christ because of worldly fashion and thus diseasing our bodies and diseasing our minds at the same time? Let's move on. Time is running rapidly. These are common practices in dress that negatively impact the health. Now, each of these bullet points we have dealt with in this series on dress reform, change of raiment. So if you have a question about one of these bullet points, really leaving the extremities naked, that um, can impact my health negatively. Yes. Go back to the playlist and look for those titles and you will see. And we go through the science of it and we go through. Um, the Bible and share these things. So look at these bullet points. These are all of the things that negatively impact our health. All of these common practices in dress, leaving the extremities exposed, na showing your nakedness, right? Revealing the chest, the back, the private areas, uneven distribution of the clothing, tight garments, um, like your belt, your accessories, even your undergarments. If they're too tight, the girdles, the waist compressions, synthetic garments, High heels, wearing shoes too small, artificial hair and pads, chemicals in the hair, which are the dyes, the perms, the relaxers, the texturizers, you name it. Wearing makeup and cosmetics, ta um, tattooing. Are we doing these things to, the, to our own demise? Death by fashion. Look at this. The fashionable style of women's dress is one of the greatest causes of all the terrible diseases. You think of the diseases in the world. Think of all the terrible diseases out there. What is one of the greatest causes? The fashionable style of women's dress. Next part of this, more die as a result of following fashion than from all other causes. That really made me raise my eyebrows. More die as a result of following fashion than from all other causes? Wow, mind blowing. Lastly, um, let's read the yellow part. Half their sufferings, talking about women that are following, that are slaves to fashion may be attributed to their manner of dress and the insane desire to conform to the fashions of the world. Again, everything we have belongs to God. Our time, the means he's entrusted to us, and our health. And God is going to ask us to give an account. So while we have time, while we have opportunity now, we need to examine ourselves and if we found ourselves as slaves to fashion, sacrificing our time, our means, and our health on the shrine of fashion, may we speedily repent. And that's why God says in Revelation 3, as many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Okay, and he counsels us to buy what? 
White raiment is one of those things to cover our nakedness. In a literal sense, in a spiritual sense, God wants to give us that change of raiment. Okay, so let us go back. If we have any questions, go back to the um, lessons that we've learned previously. Let's not make an idol out of fashion, okay? And many of us, we might be dress reformers, but we still have to be careful of pride. Are we exercising pride, following dress reform, but yet the motive behind it is pride. We have to examine ourselves. Okay, are we spending exorbitant amount of money for this goodly apparel while professing to follow dress reform? Are we destroying our health while professing to follow dress reform? All right, so I hope this was a blessing for you all. Again, look out for our next um, CIS podcast. And we still have a few more uh, topics for change of raiment. We're not closing out the series just yet. But um, may you share this and may God bless us and may he help us all in these final days of this earth's history.